he can get around out of nowhere, but the problem is when he drops off late is is always been his issue. It's been his traditional problem, and if that happens, then you need someone like KGB. That's when KGB needs to be the X Factor. So yes, it does sort of get put on his shoulders, but at the same time, it's not all him. This is a team game for them. Well, let's get it underway, everybody. Uh, game number one of our first best of three. Winner's bracket semi-final. Fnatic going up against TSM. Fnatic win the ninth round. They will choose to go on to the CT side, uh, and we'll see just how well they can play out this CT. Where can TSM find those little holes in the arm of Fnatic. Let's get it underway. And we will do just that. So already three out A. In fact, with the pistols, they want to get close quarters. So Pronax and Flusha get boosted up on Catwalk. And it's JW that's supporting them at A. In fact, he's going to drop back down towards CT, but it's going to be Crim's inside B right now that might be the first one to spot up a player. Dupree's on the right side. But so far, no one coming through. They're just setting up for this take at mid. Yeah, they're, they're trying to get as much information as they possibly can. Fnatic will always look, obviously, his pistol around to start with. So you're going to be stacking up your numbers onto one side, or at least one position, which in this case is going to be the short A, where they are hoping that TSM can push in. They can get that early frag, that early advantage. And if they have to go B, it's an easy position from there. You can drop yourself down to CT spawn and jump over quickly. But it looks like uh, TSM, they are going to commit coming in through lower to upper dark now. And uh, this will be a B movement. But look straight in the middle as well. Well, that's going to be the first kill of, of our tournament. JW, Olaf defending from the back boxes. He's going to give the call to all of Fnatic is currently moving over. And Olaf going big on device wells. Cajun B. Crims comes in from the window and shuts down the push from TSM. First round goes to Fnatic. Perfect start from Fnatic. Great read. Again, you get aggressive on Catwalk with the pistols. You get the information. They came around late. They picked up. JW obviously got that first kill. They picked up the lurking player from TSM. And then it was obvious. They had to be going B. And Olaf and Crims held strong. Now they'll go to these SMGs. Here we are, post-patch. We're going to get yep. them out. So big kill reward money and also a hefty amount of movement speed with them. This should be pretty comfortable for them. Look how quick they're moving shuts up down to. The tech nine. Flusher already there looking for one lead for two. The perfect crossfire is there for Fnatic. They're able to shut down the push and it's only the one man left. Carrigan in middle lane and that's going to be Holoff to not bring him down. In fact, Carrigan gets on top of him. So it's only one man left that was moving down through the mid doors. And he's picked up this SMG. Pronax is low, but again, that countered out the Tech Nines when they rushed through. There's no train for the T's that time. It's all been Kerrigan just pulling it back right now, and he's going to flash himself through this smoke. If he gets into a good enough position, they are both low on health. 21 and 3, respectively, for it's, either It's an impossible situation. Pronax. It's an impossible situation. You're being asked to go through long A by yourself. The bomb's on the outside. You can't do anything about that. Your only option now is to back up through short or save weapons. That's it. You have 50 seconds to play with, so you may as well try something here. But it's, it's a costly round for TSM. They bought up heavily for this, which means they're going to be pushed into... I don't know if they want to go for a full eco so they can have a real buy on round, on round 4, but... It's still a tough ask. Oh, well, I mean, that's the nature of Counter-Strike of CSGO right now. I mean, you can get into these early rounds. This is sort of, again, and I think it was Freiburg who made the tweet saying, yeah, okay, if you have Tech Nines, you can get those eco rounds. But the SMGs have made that a lot harder as Kerrigan will drop down and Fnatic will pick up round two. And that's exactly what we see. Teams are still investing into that eco buy, that second round force buy with the pistols, but it gets shut down. And this is all the way back. This was our first round. Olaf just using the box to full advantage. Yeah, it was it was the perfect crossfire of that situation. Like you, you can't get the pickoffs with your pistols from there, and even if you push out, then Crimson was in the perfect window spot. So Fnatic, good early two rounds. It will actually be like all we've got is a small upgrade in pistols. That's all. And the fire to delay things out toward long A. JW gets a little bit aggressive. Cajun's already come through, and JW finds Dupree. So. One more down, but it is that full save, like you say, and he'll just mow them apart. He oh, switches yeah. over. He's also picked up a Tech 9, so insult to injury. He's got that oh, gun. JW <laughs> mopping up the long doors, picking up four for the rounds. Olaf was able to help out. Again, that little bit of a floater. But just aim high and looking for nothing but head. And that'll let them buy out now. So we will get into our first gun round, but here's the difference. We had SMGs come out versus a force buy. The T side can't get to an op yet, and they've already got two for Fnatic, JW and Olaf both. And in fact, they're going to go aggressive with them. They're going to work it right toward Catwalk, so no long presence. That does allow Device to get up through the doors and over toward the dumpster, but the rest of the team is grouping up toward B. Yeah, but they may slow it up. That smoke is in a perfect position for Fnatic. There's no way TSM can come out with any level of information, but with the boost up, they're looking into lower dark and able to get that shot. It what, did actually connect into Cajun B, so he's down to 36 HP. And that's the play if you're going to boost the Opticat, because you've got to have that support player. As soon as he takes that first boost shot, drop out and have the rifle there in case he gets pushed from the corner. No. Instead, Cajun B was out in mid, so not up close. Doesn't matter. They'll get away with it. And they also get Cajun B down onto 36 as a result of that fall off nade, so... 
Now it's on to Olaf inside B, but again, it's still default right now from TSM. They haven't committed anywhere. Bomb's still in middle. One player out long, one player in the cave, but they aren't going to come through. Well, they, they know they need to pick up before they can really get in. Like, you, Fnatic picking up a double AWP situation, while this information isn't fully into the hands of TSM just yet. But the hard part right now is by giving up long, if Flusha does go down early and they group on Cat, which they're doing, and JW doesn't get the kills, they'll open up A entirely, but he's already found one. Dupree gets Pronax in return, and luckily, JW well, did manage to fall down, but Device has come up. This is what I'm saying. Flusha not directly in position to take him down. Luckily, Flusha comes through late. That gives him the kill, and it's all going to be oh. up to Kerrigan who gets dropped as well, so through the smoke comes JW and Flusha, and they're going to take full advantage, and Dupree's going to get pinched. Does have the bomb, does get one, but his days are numbered. Yeah, he was expecting Olaf to wait there. Point blank range up. But two players from TSM, you're able to get yourself up through long A. The smoke advantage was sort of there for them, like, but at the, at the same time, they just cannot get a single round yet. So 4-0 in favor of Fnatic. The double orbs are held, and Fnatic, it was almost a flawless round. Almost. But we're going to get back underway again. Uh, looks like someone left the bomb behind, but they are going to bring it back over to B. So again, TSM starting up with this prep where they bring three players up into upper dark and then just play from there. Well, Olaf. Flusha, yeah, he actually, pardon me, Olaf's going to spot them up, so he falls back. There's Flusha to pop out and support, so they've got a good crossfire system working now. They don't want to give up these kills to pistols, though, so Zipnik's on to Pronax is big. It does let him pick up an M4, and now they've got options late in the round. Do they push all the way through and try and overwhelm JW, or do they try and sustain this M4 for the next one? <laughs> and Tech 9 up close tries to do damage. Zipnix is the one that's peeking. He'll switch back to the op on the off angle. Yeah, there goes your plant. They got it down, so TSM, can they hold the line? They don't have all the weapons in the world. Only one M4 and a couple of techs, but Olaf, they're bringing the orbs up through short A. Device is there to hold on the stairwell. Olaf going to win on the pistol battle. JW in the meantime, with, uh, working with Crims to get back onto the site. It's all up to Dupree, taking out one. He's been pinched on two sides right now. He needs to get one, but he cannot do it. Olaf will wrap it up, and Fnatic keeping TSM on naught for the round wins. And Crims dropping down on Kerrigan inside the site really turned that back because they had full position and it was a direct retake from Short and CT. That one M4, if they had had a second rifle even, just to take down Crims when he came up the ramp, that would have completely given the round to TSM. Mm -hmm. So good save round, no less, but they'll go back and this time Device does have the op out. We'll see if it makes the difference. Man, I'm, I'm loving the way Fnatic are playing this. I was wondering if they're going to do it as well, because in, in, the, in their fight night battle, they, uh, they had a best of five up against TSM only like seven, ten days ago. JW already gets the initial pickup. They really manipulate the short A. They're able to hold there with a large amount of people and then just rotate over quickly. It's all about the call timing, and Fnatic have been doing it perfectly so far. And TSM looks slow out of the gate. Zipnix does go back. Nice nade. JW Dupree caught. Pokeball effective. They did go back for the op. That's the important thing. So Device went down early, lost that op oh. out of Olaf. That's not a common shot for him to miss. No, no, it isn't. Unfortunately for Olaf, he's given away his position here, which means Kerrigan is completely aware where he is. Olaf turns spotted around. Him. He spotted yep. him. He realizes that he's waiting for Kerrigan to show himself, but that's why Kerrigan flashes up. Zipnix pushing in through the A side, taking out JW, but Olaf gets the better of him, and the bomb is left behind. KGB has to come back and mop up the pieces, which is Olaf's corpse, and we're into a two-on-one situation. And a, a two-on-one with a lot of time. That's the other part. Yes, Crims knows they're mid, so he'll go for this pick now, but he has to gamble. He has to play mid and wait for the information and the read on these two players from TS. Them. They're going to stick it together, and of course, that op still out does mean that if he crosses these mid doors, they're going to know instantly. Yeah, and Zipnix is already making his commitment. There's, there's no other choice now. They've moved over to A. You've got 33 seconds left on the clock, and the AWP has also moved over, so Crims can rotate over, but obviously you've got to have the two players together. Strength in numbers. So the question is, does he go for this once the bomb goes down, He's or does he play for out. exits? That They've smoke doesn't cover properly. They had to wait for the secondary smoke. He spams through. They've dropped the op at long, so if Crims doesn't have a good entry and feel confident, he can at least try and secure that... Oh, from getting re-picked up, but he's going to go. Why not? 5 nothing. got money. He's going to do everything he can with this M4. Jump shots and everything, but not able to find anyone. They've fallen off perfectly timed, and that flash delays him even further. And they're on either side. 19 HP, not looking likely. And he goes down immediately. So TSM get on the board finally. And a bit of aggression from Olaf that caught them off. Yeah. That was... Like you, when you have an AWP all the way up on top mid when he's meant to be playing as a CT side, it's not something you're really expecting. Of course, if, if Olaf was able to get that initial pickup, this would have been a very, very different round. And then he would have been able to focus on that one-on-one -on -one battle with the AWPer and not worry about the two guys who are already moving up through long A. And again, by playing it with the rifles, they drop the AWP at long, they'll go back. Device gets it back into his hands. Mm -hmm. So he needs those early pickups. Very quick movement as well into... Uh, 
And that's, I mean, that's Into the thing pick. about last round. He lost that off battle early to JW, so you would have thought initially with the early pick, op down, they have to go back to get it, that Fnatic was in the driver's seat. But once Olaf pushed up and get caught out... They're in through mid doors. And no smoke, so they have to find this pick towards CT. There's no one directly there. They no. can actually push through and actually late smoke this on the on the uh, rotations. If, if they read Fnatic properly, though, well, Crims, now he's going to flash. He's going to be uh, revealing out the movement in through mid. 6 HP though, JW does find Zipnix, that's big, that slows down your secondary push, so the split's been cancelled out already and he's gonna get more. Cajun in the window, finally Device gets in position to drop him in return, but he's gonna have to smoke this off and hold it because it is a one-man disadvantage and make it two is Pronax right through the window, fearless, that bomb drop, they've got full control of the round now. That was really optimistic from Device, he had no support, Dupree was too far back over on T-spawn, which means he knew, up attack, it would be only a matter of time before someone was going to push through there, and they're coming through door, and they're coming through window, you just can't cover that many angles, and uh, Dupree is just going to hold back, save the, save the AK, 30 seconds to stay alive. And Fnatic are very happy with this. They're sitting on top of the bomb with all three there. I mean, yeah, the other thing is they reset the money bonus last round as well, so he has to hold on to this AK. There's not much at all to work with for TSM. And again, so far losing a lot of early picks that's not giving them a chance to get into the round late. They're not opening up. That time they did get up mid, I will give them credit. JW just shut down the one player who came in and Device wasn't in position to support. So it was almost yep. a one-for-one -one trade for free. Uh, and, and that favors Fnatic in that position, especially if you're running a split and half of your split's already gone. Yeah. If you could delay your upper dark play by maybe just five seconds, it would have been a lot more synced. And well, TSM with a couple of problems so far. At least have a little bit of money for this round as well. But again, they're still playing up against these double orbs. You got two M4s in there as well as an, as well as an AK. Fnatic are just rolling in the money, and, and they're also able to manipulate. But they're not, they're not fully rolling, and obviously there's a couple of players down on zero. It's not absolutely fantastic. But if they're able to win this round again, they do what they did in the earlier rounds: use the Molotov, slow down TSM, so they feel pressure to try and push in quickly. Now they have me at least managed to take out Long A, so that's one upside for them. As Pronax will get naded out inside the pit and uh, already Flusher forced to fall himself as far back as possible, almost the CT spawn. But keep your little eyes on the, on the minimap as well, for those mid doors. Well, this is the big thing, because they do actually go back to 4 on 4. They traded Pronax late, but they did. This spreads your defense, but they've already early rotated onto A. It would have been absolutely foolish for TSM to push it, so now they fanned out back across the map. GW lagged up down to 38, but Flush is going to find out Kerrigan. Yeah, they actually changed their angle of approach. TSM originally going to come in through long A, then they move back as though they were moving towards B, but it's a short, it's a short A approach. Nice shot by Olaf. Yeah, they need a cage and B to get that pick off. Now Device just makes his own space, taking out Olaf on top of short A. And JW as That's well, super Device aggressive. with two. That's super aggressive. He thought he was late. He thought they were already pushed up toward the elbow, so he actually passed the first angle. That's the most potent spot to hold Cat from. He goes past it, he gets caught. So the bomb goes down, Dupree does catch out Flusha, and again, it's all left to Crims, one on two. Last time, this is exactly when TSM picked up their first round. Very similar situation, but instead he's coming from Catwalk, not CT. Spots up one dropping down, that's Dupree. Not a lot of damage dealt onto him, so he'll still be able to sit back. Not only that, more importantly, gives away his position, but ballsy play as he jumps down, and Dupree gets dropped, so one-on-one, -on -one, lots of time. Still a kid up for Crims, but he has to find the shot right now, and he won't. Device gets it. And that would have been a big, big take if they can get it back. Now Fnatic are in a, in a bad position with their money, as we do have ourselves a quick pause. So we got a moment to think about what was going on, but man, TSM, they, they're at least finding some rounds now. Like, they were held back for so long by Fnatic, but now they're starting to at least get some rounds together. The rounds they're getting are still extremely close, though, so the economy is still going to be very, very tight for them. They need to win a round outright, almost. They need to get at least four, I'd say three at the very least, over the finish line in this round if they want to start building back to get, get momentum going their way. Otherwise, they're going to have to just keep grinding against Fnatic. Yeah. And I, I don't think TSM really want to think, hey, we'll just go in with, into the CT round with three or four rounds. That's, that's not going to be enough for them. They still have to remember what Fnatic did to them just the other week, and like they were really hyper-aggressive. Get, getting into the sites, always getting those plants down. So TSM, they have to be able to find more rounds than just three or four. But at least for the moment, they're the ones with the... Uh, with the, with the weapons advantage, but JW, they just go up through mid. Three of them together, Device holding back at suicide with that AWP. They have to be careful, because that AWP could be oh, potentially nade. under threat. Nice nade coming back, but there it is. Device does come out and catch off those players. They were all weakened by that initial spray, but interestingly enough, none of them dropped. So we are at two on two, and again, we talked about we needed three to get over the finish line. They've already lost three players to these pistols. They will close it out. They will get this round, but they're still going to be quite tight on the money. Yeah. 
It's that economic advantage which Fnatic were just pushing for them. They want to make sure they could drop as many of these of these rifles as possible. And potentially, if they could have denied the orb up, it would have been wonderful. But you you're on a, you're on a proper eco, and uh, you end up taking out three players. You're still fine if you're Fnatic. Oh yeah, no, that's that. I mean, that's a bit of a win for Fnatic. Obviously, they want more from that, but they've only got to do a little bit of work here to keep TSM broke. So yeah, that definitely favors them. Dupree trying to flash his way through this smoke at the corner, but nobody up close. So uh, investing the nades for absolutely nothing at this point. They've all fallen back. Know that. Like they're, they're looking back towards mid doors as well as through short A. Because really, oh. how many how many times yet yeah, GW wanting to play catch with a nade? Try and switch to a baseball. This is a lot more catwalk presence than we normally see out of a CT side lately. Fnatic's definitely playing it. It's normally that three long push and then a rotate back to middle that we see. As Kerrigan's going to come through, this opens it up. Smokes to go out, but Olaf's up close. So if a flash goes deep, it'll be beyond him. That oh, one catches him, as does the second, but here's Crims. Yeah, and they're not going, they're going catwalk. Yeah, they actually backed up, hoping the Fnatic would rotate down to them and just do the drop players down from the short A. But Pronax stays up there, claims two of the, two of the scalps of TSM. And now we're in a two-on-two -two situation. Device at least managed to play oh. the B side. Oh! Device, the nerves are definitely showing. That's not common. Luckily, Kerrigan does get that kill, because if the round goes back after a shot like that, it's going to be hard to shake off. Yep. And he makes up for it. So they'll bring it back to 6-4, to four, but man, Device, get the jitters out now. Well, the same thing happened to Olaf when he ran up the mid. Didn't get that guy running over through long A. So, yeah, both teams. Orp is just a little bit off target, but at the same time, six rounds to four. Keeping it close. Again, Fnatic not wanting to spend too much. But you're running this AWP 4 AK and Device every time he's been looking towards his mid. Uh, so those jump shots. He's waiting for, th for the sneak out. And yep, there he is. He, do he does oh. the jump up and unable to connect. Hits Still the lag though. There we go. So Zipnix took him down on that lag. That first shot missed by a millimeter. He's playing this AWP like it's a scout. Lasha tries to peek out. Thought they might be a little bit closer on the back of that flash or probably that smoke. Kerrigan catches them, so now it's down to only three players left, and they're spread out entirely on Fnatic's side, so they're just going to play for damage at this point. Oh, Crims gets the initial hit, sitting on the very edge of the smoke. But it's, it's still a two, it's still a two on four situation. There should be no problem right now for uh, TSM. They'll get the plant down. This is a bit of a good momentum comeback now that they've got going because in the qualifiers, when they beat Fnatic on the maps that they did, this one included, it was all on early starts. 7 nothing on Inferno. I think it was something like 6-1 to one on Dust. So this is a little bit different. They actually have to play from behind, and we haven't seen them have the success against Fnatic when they are playing from behind. So if they can keep this going, this is actually a, a great performance now from TSM. Oh. Well, they look pretty good. Device going to pick up JW, and that just leaves Olaf over on long doors, and Cajun B is right next to him. In fact, they're even just revealing positions quickly. And Olaf just wants to do damage. Yeah. Oh, flashes. They're actually coming for him. Yeah, he, he's away. He's away and safe. So TSM, five rounds to six. Fnatic, we will be going back into a buy again. So the orbs up for Olaf. JW's going to stick with the M4 for now. And TSM, th this is the big test for them. Can they, can they get Fnatic when they're doing a proper buy? Right now, it's really a battle of JW versus Device, as we see in the stats. 15 JW. In terms of kills and 13 for Device. The rest, everyone else on single digits still. So these two guys are definitely stepping up. And again, we talked about Device. We said Cajun's the X Factor, but it's Device that has to be consistent. So far, so good. One little jittery shot <laughs> aside. Yeah. Oh, Fnatic. They try and stack up on the mid door so they can see up to, up, up to Cat. Try and play from there, but TSM, they've been given long. Carrigan will show himself down lower dark. That He's the only player the over here, though. Kerrigan got very lucky that bullet came through the box because it actually dinked him, but it only did ninety, it only did eight damage. So, so they can at least see, still keep playing aggressive. But TSM playing sneaky, beaky, like down this long A. But already, uh, yeah, Pronax is feeling something's coming. The smoke starts up, and he sees a lot from the flash to start with Pronax. She brought down by Zipnix, which means this bomb site currently belongs to TSM. And this is a very challenging retake. They do still have Olaf or JW in the up. corner. There it is. So he pops out. They have no idea he's there. Bomb does go down, and they still haven't got him. He has to switch to the pistol, but Flush has already jumped up and got Dupree. And what a shot from JW. And that was Smoke and Mirror's play right there. But Device, the bomb plan is out. But with oh, that all from long, Kerrigan's going to find the double. Flush finally silences him, and it's going to have to all be Device now. He misses on the first one, and he gets dropped as a result. So his op, not 100%, that's for sure. And they do and manage to find the ball. JW, so sneaky, just sat in the corner, knew they weren't coming up catwalk. 
He'd already got the call from Pronax. There was four on long, so he just had to wait for the retake, and that's exactly what they do. And Flusher made that perfect there. By jumping up, coming up through the CT spawn ramp area, he made it so that TSM had to look down towards the long area and just keep him distracted, which allowed JW to have that space to enter into what was initially the M4 battle and then in the end a pistol battle. So TSM... They get the plan down, but the retake successful for Fnatic. They go seven rounds to five, but there's still a lot of money for both sides. So we still have we still have full buys. <laughs> so, the, these these smokes up mid. This is something which Olaf was playing around with the other night, where he just tries to push up aggressively through the doors, almost like like former Penta player Dennis style. Oh, JW's gonna get caught. That flash had him. He had nowhere to hide. So KGB picks up the double around the corner. Olaf has to play this from reverse out of CT. He Keep can't. in mind also, he's so blind here though. And there's no one to boost him. There's no one else there, so he can't go up elevator. He has to wait for them to cross over and hope for something to go horribly wrong on TSM's part. Uh, they're loving the mollies up. Trying to stop TSM from getting that quick plant down. Maybe maybe just buy some time for the smoke to disappear. Olaf's still permanently flashed. Well, he also bought time before this bomb could be planted because Device couldn't run on top of the site. Uh, Olaf's revealed. Crossfire's still in great position as well though, and there it is. Cajun's gonna make it the hat trick. Krems wants to peek out, Cajun is looking away from him, so he should get this kill, and he does. But he's still got two more, and Zipnix won't let him go any further. This is a one-point game. And TSM, looking alive on the A site, not a lot going on at B. Yeah, you, you wouldn't have actually thought the TSM were four rounds down at the very, very start, and the Fnatic looked like they were going to hit all the shots, and TSM just couldn't find anything. And then a couple of rounds get back together, and... All of a sudden, TSM looking absolutely wonderful. You are right, though. The main focus has been over on the A side. Initially, the first three to four rounds, it was always the three players coming over to B, just like the way they're doing right now. And then they look towards the A side. So Cajun B is going to keep the attention over on A, but they're moving in very quickly. The bomb carry has already moved up on B, while Cajun B makes as much noise as he can on long doors. And here is that movement. Zipnik's already with the first one. He brings down Crims. There's one on the backside that needs to be to flush him out. And yep, Zipnik brings down Olaf. And device with the AWP, there's no way to easy rotate through CT spawn, but with the smoke it's going to cover, uh, cut them out. Pronax also getting caught at the double doors in mid. Agent B just waits it out, Carrigan with the extra help, and this is a great entry from TSM. The one time you say, hey, they're not really going for B, and, and it's a flawless and entry. what I was going to point out was actually that they finally switched up their A, so great read or gamble rather, perhaps even, from TSM, because they did go for that three push A get out to the corner early. Of course, they did have the pistols, and then one player fell back. Interestingly, didn't go mid, went toward catwalk nonetheless, but mm -hmm. they did change up their A, and TSM go B the exact round they did it. Yep. And we're on 7-7. Seven, seven. Last round of the half, everyone's going to force out absolutely everything they can, and that means that Pronax has to go with the FAMAS. JW only with that CZ-75 and a Swag-7 and Olaf Meister for the FAMAS as well. Yeah, they they basically dipped into the barrel and grabbed the best of what they could find. Uh, who's going to have the first round advantage coming into half time? Fnatic, they hold in tight. They've already blown their Molotovs, but they've got a couple of smokes, flashes, and uh, decoy nade, that's all. And Flusha is playing at the mid-door with the shotgun. So as soon as they come through, they haven't really been playing anyone up close. In fact, there was Grimm's there to support it. He's going to fall off it, but... It's only been maybe two or three times they've done it, though. Like, really, TSM moving in through the mid, it hasn't been a regular occurrence. Instead, they keep looking towards the short. They keep looking towards long A. And now the spam sus begin. JW loses long A. And this leaves Flush in an awkward position. They know he's there now. Yeah, he's, he's actually spamming pushed that up. away. He's actually pushed up to try and defend against him. But no, now, sorry, Pronax, he's going to go down. Kerrigan needs to watch his back on this cat push, though. Crims has the best angle here, but he's not going to be able to find anyone. Again, the smoke nades are perfect. You do have the Molotovs, which are now keeping Crims out from moving up through the CT ramp. But it's also stopping uh, TSM from getting the quick plant. It is down now. As Kerrigan. Oh, that's a big hit. Flusher, now he's got the advantage to come in through short A, a 3 on the 4 situation. The problem is though, that's the only shot that shotgun can really be effective at, at, at this point, because as soon as he comes around the corner, it's got, a range He's got game. his M4 though, he picks up the, M, the, the M4 that oh, was in the hands of the T. It. So you, you may get that little range, but Dupree sitting up on the high ground, it's going to be TSM. They take out the last round of the first half, and they move in to the second half with just that one round advantage. And this started from 5 nothing for Fnatic, so excellent work for TSM to pull this back. T-side specifically, again, in the era with Kerrigan as the leader. This has been the first map that started to go back T-sided for them. And uh, it definitely shows the consistent play again. Device all the way through. Cajun B stepped up late in the half when other yeah. people started to trail. And great performance. Again, A-site looked a little weak for Fnatic, so they're going to have to be aware of that moving forward in the tournament. But now it's their turn to go on the attack. Yeah, and we'll see where uh, TSM... Can try and punch into, uh, into I say punch into Fnatic. They're on the they're on the defense, but then again, 
Let's see where they try and hold the line. Fnatic, they instantly move over to the A side to start with. So two players out, long, for, long A for TSM, two in the B. Wait, why am I seeing six? Uh, decoy. <laughs> decoy, you're right. No, no, there's, there's six dots moving on the map, on the mini-map. Yeah, there is six dots actually moving. Interesting. Yeah, thought I was the only person tripping. Are they playing with a bot? <laughs> But no less, they do give up long A. Oh, so they're going to play for is. this retake. There is a slight gap. They'll call that they're over. Kerrigan knows it, and he actually takes wow. full advantage. Nice shot catching on Pronax. Cage and B to combine with it, too. So already, this push up from Fnatic. They do get the bomb point down, but can they hold it? JW, Cage and B still popping around like a rabbit. Bunny hop it all the way. Might want to try and boost him up. Crims can't take out the short A, and that's going to be a successful retake from TSM. Important to note, though, bomb does go down. So Fnatic could go for a full save right now and get guns out a little bit earlier on than the typical three rounds, so TSM needs to take full advantage. They can't get eco right here. It'll be even worse that the round will just completely fall apart. The economy will get completely trashed and Fnatic will walk to the end. Mm. Look at this shot. The first one through the smoke was brilliant on Pronax. It's like somehow he finds an air box just to sit on so he can maintain his composure and get the shots. So Fnatic... And this is interesting because they've gone for four rifles. They're not going for the SMG, so this is an exp expensive investment, excuse me, from TSM right now. I cannot afford to lose this round. Because if they do, the momentum swing is going to be massive against them. And it's only P250s against them, so no Tech 9s. Still a small investment, but not nearly as much. And that means Fnatic know that they want to get these rifles out regardless. Where is Fnatic heading to? They, they started up looking through upper dark. Now it looks like it's going to be a switch over through to short, short A. While well, leaving one floater on long, eh? There's definitely two schools of thought on going for the rifles early. They know Fnatic got the bomb down, so they're likely going to have guns out in the next round. So that way they won't have to upgrade. But at the same time, if they lose any of these players with the rifles, they're going to be hurting when they do finally go into our gun round. Make the call, Cajun B. He's already managed to tag up all of them. Finally, there's some kills coming the way of TSM. Three of them to go down. And this push up through short A, not successful enough. In fact, not successful at all. There will be one player. Zipnix actually gets picked off at the last moment. And that's what... Okay, so it was the FAMAS. Yeah. So that's my point. They needed to keep all three M4s up because now they're going to see AKs come out on Fnatic's side. So this means they don't have to upgrade. They can actually get the guns out. But again, if they lost anyone, it would have changed everything. And in fact, JW's gone straight for the op. It's a glass cannon, though. No armor, he no needs, nades. He needs He's that desperate. This, Yeah, they're going for a desperate play he right now. He needs this, this mid-pick. Mid -pick. He's actually holding back. He may still get it, though. Yeah. It's like he's trying to keep himself secret. That's device. He, oh, just misses it. So he does cross back over. This favors the A side defensively right now. Four players on the right side of middle. It's only Dupree that's over in toward B site right now. At the same time, though, it won't take long for Fnatic if they can get through the mid door, smoke up the CT spawn. Getting up there won't be it won't be too hard. That's why Device is actually now starting to back it up. So they got the two players in a B and rotating another one in through CT. At the same time, then Fnatic moved towards the A site. The bomb is still a long way back. It's almost over on long A. But they're seeing if they can get themselves in on the A side to start with. Then they can potentially take the bomb over to B. That's why the float is over there. And there's the first kill. Cajun B is going to drop, so Crims opens it up. JW looking for that long A play and not going to find him. And very smartly, Olaf goes directly to Cat. He knows there has to be a long player waiting for him. He has the bomb. He goes down. It throws it back TSM's way. So he'll go the path that's already been trampled down by his teammates. Join them. The bomb's going to go down, and it has to be a strong and fast retake from TSM. Yep. But how quick do they want to move? And at the same at time, they just lost Sipnix. It might be worth just saving the M4s because where Flusher is, Device will be able to shut him down. And that's Olof. exactly what they're going to do. Yeah, they're, they're backing up. They managed to get, just have the two M4s save for the next round. It's too difficult to get the retake with just the three of them. And Kerrigan's going to pick up the AK that was dropped in tunnels. So they will get three rifles out of this, but... Fnatic is trying to hunt him a little bit. So Pronax is watching through the CT spawn. So they, they know where they're, hold, where they're holding. Because they control everywhere else on the map, Fnatic, apart from just up to the side. The important aspect as well, JW survives, so... Might have been Glass Cannon, but... Now, now he'll got, already now have the off and can fully oh, invest in... Oh, Olaf does actually get Device at the end, so one less rifle to work with on the CT side. So a small victory at the end as well for Fnatic, and it's a two-point game with them in the control right now. That's an annoying thing as well, because you manage to save the M4 and then you die after the clock expires too. Just frustration more than anything else. So, TSM, they still hold the round advantage. JW, gonna get aggressive with his AWP, looking down towards Long, and he opens up on Cajun B. That's the JW we're used to. Hybrid AWP, get aggressive on the peaks. Patch not slowing him down at all, and now Krems is gonna secure into the lower tunnels. Knows Kerrigan's directly above as he does catch JW, so AWP is down. 
Obviously doesn't know there's two other players. Oh, nice flash. Helping him up in mid. Can go for the kill. Look for the second. Gonna claim it as well. Crims through the double doors. Excellent flash. Great teamwork from Fnatic. Kerrigan, all that's left, does have this AK. And does he want to go for this or not? That's right. the question. Right now, I, I, th there's almost no choice. Because he knows he's gonna, he's gonna get hunted. Uh, it's a three on one. And the smoke holds him out. And I think he'll sit and just look for exits. He knows they, he, they will look. You're right, they should yeah, at this they, point look. They know, look. They know where he is. A bank, but uh, he can't go through on this. Three on one, no point. Keep the AK, start building back into the game, but he's going to have to be careful. Crims knows. Crims is still checking. Uh, and and he's going to get him as well. What a round from Crims. Two I mean, on the entry, one on the close, and now it's one point. Fnatic were also able to pick up that all Pronax rotated all the way back around. I was wondering, because like, they, they could have just potentially moved Pronax in through the long A, but they knew the AWP were just sitting on, on top of mid. So the better thing was, grab it, and then they'll be ready for the next round. Keep Talk as much money in their, in their accounts as possible. Talk about timing on that replay too. Device just two steps behind when he was already focused into the corner, so that could have turned things around. Mm. So double op set up for TSM this time. Cajun B in Device. Kerrigan's out toward Pit. It's actually going to be Cajun B that's holding on that corner. So if they go up Catwalk, he'll have the strong angle from the car to hold it when they get to the elbow. Has to just be worried at that point that if one player does drop into CT, your rotators have to be in position early or you quickly get overwhelmed and pushed back so far into long that you actually give up the site before you can go for the damage. So now it's going to have to be a strong read. That's exactly where they're trying to go right now as well on the Catwalk. So Zipnix yeah. has to be the player that watches this drop if they go for it. At the same time... You do have uh, Cage and B just watching over from over, uh, over on car. So if anyone's going to come up through catwalk, the, the chance of them being able to get a successful drop off is very, very low. They have to hug the wall to do it. But this, this is a proper commitment. This is a proper commitment to A. The smoke is keeping him back for now. Zipnix and Cage and B just being as protective as they possibly can. Yeah, there's your pre-flash. So there you go. Yep. They do drop it. That's all you have to do is bounce it's, it. It's once. only one though. It's and now Crims. he's forced oh, back. He hit. So Crims gets it. Cage and B doesn't get it. He was already forced back. This means Zipnix in the corner has to come up big on the goose. And so far his feathers are going to get flocked Quite everywhere Kerrigan. as Kerrigan drops as well. JW with him onto the op, and it's all left to Device and Dupree, and they're a long way away over on the B site. Yeah, it's Device with no armor. He's he's that uh, again glass cannon orb. So it's it's impossible for TSM to get back into this side up against the three of Fnatic. And Fnatic, that, that initial kill, that initial kill you got onto Cage and B, that opened up everything. As you said, Zipnix, he had to go huge or go home. And then Kerrigan tried to give him the crossfire coming up through long A. But they couldn't get it all at the right time. And again, we find this position, which happened at the start of, our, uh, the, start of the half, the first half that was, where TSM just find themselves being picked off one by one by one again. Of course, it was different the last time around because they were on T side now trying to push in. Oh, uh, device. <laughs> oh, run, buddy, run. <laughs> he, he pulled out. Away. He potentially could have got that kill. He pulled out of the AWP at the last moment, out of the scope. Man, how big has JW been? 21 1 14. I mean, next best on the team, Olaf 13, and he hasn't exactly been quiet at times either, so. I mean, he's your difference, man. If you look at TSM, everyone actually are well grouped 15, 14, 13, 12. All close together, but again, device hasn't really kept up in that regard. So, 10 rounds apiece. Fnatic. Again, KW. They yeah, he already managed to find that pick on Cage and B. Uh, device from short A. Able to stop that movement from Fnatic coming out through uh, upper dark into lower dark. Kerrigan's also down here, but he's only got a pistol in hand. He'd love to grab that rifle. He may catch off one here because they've already had aggression and fallen. It's it could probably be actually wondering where they're coming from. TSM moved everyone to A. B is completely exposed. Or if, if, if Fnatic knew this, Pronax and Flusher and Olaf would just run into B, plant the bomb down, and TSM would then be forced into a retake. There's that AK now into the hands of Kerrigan. But can he get the kill on Olaf? Yep, Olaf will bring him down. And already JW. <laughs> he can look towards Device on the A site, but B currently belongs to the rest of his team. Device now realizes into an AWP battle. But there's no one else over here on B, so Device will be able to bring down JW. But where, where do you now come if you're TSM? You don't. Or you don't. You just hold back? Yeah, B is too hard to retake in this position. You got two outside the wall. Tunnels have already been contested. And actually, there was an opportunity strictly because Olaf went on the chase early. But you're not going to come up tunnels without getting a trade or a perfect headshot. And already Olaf showed that he was capable of shutting down Kerrigan when he tried to do exactly that with the AK. And 
without a player at least to distract the two inside the site, you're not coming through the wall that easily. Yeah. TSM should still be very, very happy. Get the kill on Erloff, pick up the second ult for the next round. So, nice for them. Dupree. <laughs> I think JW might be getting a little bit frustrated at the moment. But they are still a round ahead now. So, first map up against TSM here on Dust 2. And no gun rounds going the way of TSM. That's the important thing to note is that they haven't been able to shut down the firepower since Fnatic bought on round three of this half. They haven't had an answer at all, and they're losing the picks that are crucial. Again, Cajun B on that drop play from Crims. That opened up A. It looked like they had a good crossfire set up, but when Cajun drops and there's no support from Zipnix, he's too far back onto Goose. Uh, how Opens quick things up. How quick is Pronax moving in? Good flashes. They, they use the double back. flashes from Olaf to try and keep TSM out. They Olaf is separated from the rest of his team, and there goes Pronax. So long A push fail. And they knew Pronax pushed up. So with Olaf still on the backside, it was easy to retain at least the first kill. And now they've got to work with this, because this is the first time they've had the opening pick in a while. Yeah, Zipnix is down to 5 HP, but a man advantage is a man advantage. They've got to utilize this to full effect. As Crims tries to spam through middle and find anyone, but there's not really anyone up close, in fact. Yeah, it's a really passive hold on middle right now. And obviously even really revealing a, an aggressive position or not, but it, it shows the Fnatic, like you kind of knew Fnatic was going to go for the short A to slash mid doors well anyway. Timed. Well timed to throw out the fire. It's the perfect delay. Throw it if you got it. Flush is going to throw this smoke toward mid. He just wants to bide the time with these rotators. And it does. Zipnix is already looking, thinking it might be a push, but there's the call back. So Cajun's made the right call, and he'll actually hold station. That's because there's a smirk on short A. But again, watch for this flash. Olaf and JW, if they drop one player and that CT spawn person, who is that oh, down they, there? They brought down Zipnix. JW was able to get the upper hand, but Cajun B gets the return kill. Flush and now Nosy can move up through that CT, to CT spawn, but Carrigan's still over on long A. He's the two on the side. Now he can get that crossfire over Flusher, hiding in the corner, and he ain't Carrigan. Forced to actually engage into Olaf as well as taking out Crims. He might hold even it, just go for the straight it, defuse. It, Five seconds, Flusher is on the run. It's a one on one, but there's no time for Flusher to reach him. Zero no. seconds, the defuse is there. And Great hold. <laughs> Flusher at least gets the consolation, but again, that whole. Hold on the A site could have been a lot tighter. It's Zipnix who's inside CT spawn. As soon as they come around the corner on Catwalk, he has to hold the first player to allow Cajun B to... to it, basically, if you're going to have the op on the reverse side by car, it's your angle to control unless you get a player low that it gets far too close for comfort, and then you have to fall back. If Zipnix can control that, Cajun B can control Catwalk a lot easier. And that's been their problem so far. And Carrigan, big play for his team. Huge play for his team. And even Device loses the battle against Flusha, but just held him there long. I mean, this was millimeters. Yeah. That was that was as close as you'd it like. Was, to it, it, was back it was up. one second. That was like, if, if he had if he had an extra actually three seconds, he would have been able to run himself up through the ramp and get the kill. But time is not their friend, and we lock it up, keeping it even. Stevens 11-11. As we go into the 23rd round, and JW can't get the initial tag on the movements to be. Man, he had the perfect spawn considering they didn't smoke it. Oh, that's a quick flash, but Dupree. She did a quick call, so the A player is already starting to move over. So they're watching closer towards that CT spawn area. But Fnatic haven't made up their minds. That bomb's still back at T spawn. It's full commitment from Kerrigan at long, too. By going all the way past the pit into the corner, that's full commitment. Mm. Even if he wants to cross over late and they have a lurk player watching him, it makes it hard to get back to A. Oh, well, he's got Cage and B giving him the cover. It's easy enough. And they're actually going to pull him off the position. In fact, they're going to push him in towards the doors and allow Cage and B to move back behind the A side. Again, Zipnix is the guy that has a lot of pressure on him right now because he's holding the mid. They're playing at 2 and B to play passively, and that means he has his timing to go back towards CT to do exactly what we talked about in the last round has to be spot on. Even if Dupree comes out to middle, that gives them a little bit more leeway to lead off toward A, but so far they haven't done that. Here comes that flash onto the A side. The smoke comes down at the perfect time from TSM, though, so Fnatic, they don't really see much Cajun B. He's seeing Molotovs flying out from short A, but who's going to get the initial frag? It's Cajun B onto JW, and now they can try and lock him up on top of Catwalk. And in fact, Cajun B taking it too, looking for the third, can't actually hit the target. Even though that target is blind as a bat, Crim's caught in the corner. There's Cajun B for the third, looking for the fourth, looks on target, but going to be off. Either way, it is going to be a flawless round for TSM. Not a single weapon lost. So, that time's... Zipnik stays alive, gets on the ramp, slows them down, and Cajun B actually changed the angle entirely. They were not expecting him to be that close. Perfect hold. And again, Zipnix was there. All he has to do is be there. They can't drop down. That means Cajun doesn't have to worry about both angles, and he can just go to work, and that's exactly what he does. Cajun three. And, and they're back into the lead. 
that these these opening opening flashes and smokes and molotovs from from Fnatic every time they try and come into that A site through through short it just seems to be completely ineffective. Fnatic are moving the positioning too well, and their timing on their smokes and mollies. Yep, perfect. So TSM they hold tight while Fnatic they have gone for the full AKs apart from just one extra Galil. And they want the initial pick. Olaf couldn't really do anything. In fact, long A, it almost feels like Fnatic haven't had any real presence there at all. So then instead they the come mid. It's the opposite of what we saw in the last half with TSM constantly bombarding onto the A site. B's been actually quite quiet the entire time. But right now they are out mid. Slowly out mid. Smoke comes out late. That gives Cajun one shot through it. He takes down Pronax, makes good on the first opportunity, and that's the only opportunity oh, he'll get. That was nice. But Device is going to make his own. Pushes out. They still think he's at Fox, and he switched yeah. to the left. He pushed himself out through the side of the smokes. So we saw it perfectly, and TSM, they hold the gun round. That's that such shuffle a slippery in the smoke. Play. Yep, Device, that was brilliant. Just to slide over to the left, they hyper focus onto the boxes, and he picks yep. up a double as a result. And now they've got a two round lead and a bit of a com comfortable economy, at least. Not so much in their wallets, but going against them from Fnatic, they're not uh, looking too wealthy. And just enjoying the way TSM are playing the CT side. It's been so tight. Tajan B now gets to be the man to look for Olaf, trying to push aggressively, but Olaf, well, he will go into the doors, but he doesn't want to go much further than that. This is only a pistol round for them, so they know they don't have the weapon advantage. That's why TSM, they're looking to keep two players over on that long ace. They could just slaughter Fnatic in the door, in the door choke point. The where's Fnatic go? Do they look towards mid? Device is in the perfect position for that. Flashes up the two mid players again. Well, they are still going to persist with it. It's Fnatic. Yeah, look at him come up. Pronax looking for the opening. Device going to reveal him to start with, then throws the block nade. Considering this is a save, they've given up a lot of mid control. There was actually a chance for a split on the B, and if the pistols had overwhelmed the two players defending both Dupree and Device, then there was a chance for them to walk in because everyone else was all the way out toward long. Fortunately, Fnatic didn't take that opportunity. They're going to walk back up Cat, and it's going to be standard formation. Carrying her, pardon me, KGB this time. He misses that shot, does get no. the one up close. That's the important kill. And now it's just going to be a clean anti eco from this point, or is it? Cajun does go down, but they'll grab the op. And TSM, you lose only one, you're 14 rounds to 11. Two rounds required to take map number one. And Fnatic, they need some kind of answer on this T side. They need to find a way to get into the sights of TSM. When was the last time we even saw a bomb plant? I mean, this is, I mean, it is a streak of hot and cold right now. Fnatic started this half off very well after winning that first gun round and it looked quite comfortable. TSM hadn't found anything but that slight adjustment today again Zipnix being able to stay alive a little bit longer, Cajun changing the angle, it's made a lot of difference and Fnatic this time are putting a lot more presence in the tunnel so maybe they'll look to be... The TSM put more presence into the mid doors, Device waiting there for the flash, oh. he just turns, he only picks up one however, Fnatic actually getting the advantage coming in through the mid doors and now they're on a four on three situation. Dupree holding on the box. He's got support coming in from Sipnix and through CT spawn. But Flasher already on the side. Brings down Dupree. B site belongs to Fnatic. This is their best chance right now to get themselves back into this map. And Kerrigan just shot over the head. Or pardon me. Dupree shooting over the head at double doors made all the difference. If he picks up that lineup triple, this round's over. Instead, now they've got B. So uh -huh. Plant's going to come out finally. First one in a long time, as you mentioned. Yeah, and TSM have no desire to try and contest this. They just hold back. If Fnatic want to try and hunt him, sure, let him go for it. In fact, Olaf, who's the man on 3 HP, at least gas out the fact that Zipnix is in the pit, but there's no way he's going to enter into an AK versus M4 battle with 3 HP. It'll be interesting to see how much they do want to push because they are going to see reset a four-round money bonus that goes their way right now. However, they have been doing decent damage to TSM with the exception of the last anti-eco. And that means it's still worth it to get the guns out of their hand, especially when they're this close to these 15 rounds. And Zipnix is going to find Olaf. That was your 3 HP player. Yeah. And that's all that's going to happen. He's not going to repeat. He knows the ops there. It's a fanatic. Money to buy. Big rounds to come. TSM. They've still got money in the bank. So all they need to do is just hold one more round at least up against Fnatic. Force, it, force all the pressure into Fnatic. Push it to potentially overtime. And TSM, well, he commit three players to long A. At the same time, Fnatic, their, their commitment comes in through upper dark again. But this is what they've been doing for almost the last three, four rounds. It's just four players up into upper dark. Then they basically put the brakes on. Run slowly, move slowly in towards that mid. 
then come in through the doors. Smoke up through the, through the CT spawn and then come into the B side. But this time Zipnex, well, he gets the heavy tag into JW, down by 46 HP. Oh, almost gets him on the secondary spam as well. Yep, there's so much flashes, so many smokes. And the rest of the rotations are coming. There's one player waiting in mid, and that's going to be Crims. To shut down Zipnex. Device still on the side. Olaf battling up against him. He's not expecting the second player, though. Crims comes through. Bronax can't clean up the back box. And Dupree forced to switch over to that USP, and he's able to wrap it up. JW will drop, and TSM with three map points up against Fnatic. And Fnatic, not a lot of money to work with here. Excellent hold. That time, the passive two-player in B position works brilliantly. They don't leave Dupree out and let Zipnix get in position. They just let him fire away from far. Again, you look at someone like LDLC or Nip, they play that second man at B in mid early, let Happy in, in I said LDLC, in Envious's case, to get up onto the boxes and play it a little bit closer. Instead, they let Zipnix play it from the backside. He does good damage, and then it was just a hold that was well executed. Dupree this time firing through the smoke. Can't spot up onto Flusha, but Flusha's going to come right through, and that nade will give him away, but he falls. Smartly falls, because that was a slaughter. Yep. So, Fnatic, what have you got in your magic bag of tricks? Again to the mid. Nope. They're pushing up through short instead this time around. But TSM, with that smoke into the mid, they have already pulled one player off A, but with the two on long, it doesn't take much to rotate back. In fact, Cage and B is already there, back behind the A side. The flashes might come, but at the same time the flashes arrive, that smoke comes in again. Fnatic have a small little crevice, but it's, it's, not, it's not big enough, not on the right angle. Yeah, debatably actually could favor them, because then your op still has the shot on the corner. Yep. And that's all KGB has been waiting for. He's wanting Fnatic to at least get a little bit of momentum up, get out onto Catwalk, and then they start carving them up. Again, though, Zipnix is still focusing middle, and they're already around the corner on Catwalk, so this is where Zipnix needs yep. to make sure if a they player drops, he has to take him down oh. immediately, and it's a double! He lines them up, and Cajun B is going to get two! And Zipnix, there it is, does catch Olaf when he tries, and it's all left to one, and that is wow. Grims, and it's not going to be enough. So from behind, after being down 5 nothing early, TSM take map one, dust that, two. Man, their CT side was so tight, so tight. There was just no way for Fnatic to come in. They, uh, they, they tried mid-doors, they tried in through short A. There was no heavy push into B, but they never had any presence in long A.